Welcome, everyone, to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Morales. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this podcast is about the ups and downs of dating and how to navigate through it. Today, my guest is Julie DeLuca Collins. She is the founder and CEO of Go Confidently Services, the host of the popular Casa de Confidence podcast, and her weekly radio show, Confident You, which is featured on the Global Talk Radio Network. Julie, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Me too. I, I appreciate it today. We got a good topic. It's key things to do before you date. So first of all, Julie, I want to ask you, how did you get to this part in your life? You know, how did you come up with the Go Confidently Services? Mm-hmm. What was Julie DeLuca Collins's uh, travel? <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, my, my story um, in a nutshell is I started my career as an educator. I was a preschool teacher. Then I worked with middle school students and I um, decided I, I was not very good a morning person and I, and I wanted to do something <laughs> different. I was recruited for an educational company and I started working for an educational company. I was so fortunate that throughout that uh, career, this company really prioritized building leaders from within. And I kept growing up the ranks of this company until I hit the executive suite with the organization. And after that, um, I I went to work for another organization and I was again climbing the corporate ladder in that organization until I hit the C suite. I thought I had made it and I was in the great <laughs> spot. I knew that I wanted to help women. I had been working with a life coach myself and had made a big difference in my confidence and um I was laid off through the pandemic and when I was laid off I thought, "Oh, perfect. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I want to help women build their confidence because one of the questions that I got as I was growing through um, these organizations and, you know, going in, you know, a different role, higher role, better role. Most women, one, were not necessarily a lot of women, the higher you get in corporate America. It was mainly a lot of men, which is perfectly fine. But, you know, I think that there's a lot of women that would say to me, I wish I could do what you're doing. I wish I was as confident as you are. And I just really thought about this because I don't have it all together and I'm not necessarily the most 100% confident person all the time. But I think that one of the things that sets me apart is that I use habits to be able to continue to show up and I continue to just 1% incremental change and evolution is what really makes us better and the thing that has allowed me to to have success go confidently services came about because uh, my favorite quote and this is a quote that my dad shared with me at an early age is go confidently in the direction of your dreams live the life you have imagined and i think that this quote aligns to whether you're in a business owner you're in dating you're in relationships we all have these dreams and we have this idea of what we would like for ourselves. But at times we don't go after our dreams because we sit in the sidelines listening to those tapes that tell us that we're not good enough. I'm not, you know, this enough, or I'm, or I'm not like that person or, you know, I don't have it together. And that's what keeps us stuck. And for me, my mission is to be able to help others build the skills and the habits that it takes them for them to become more confident in whatever it is that their dreams are. Wow. Okay. You know, it, it's funny. I, I was thinking, you know, when uh, in today's topic, like I said, I think it's a really good one, key things to do before you date. And, and, and I wanted to talk about that first. Um, well, you know what? Let me backtrack a little bit. So when you decided that, you know, you got laid off during the pandemic, Mm-hmm. And you and you found it as as maybe a a message that you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. When you when you did get laid off, did you go through an emotional period where you were like, oh my god, you know this sucks, I got laid off. But it seems like you didn't because you knew what you wanted to do afterwards. Yeah. So you know, for me, and and I think that this is a a, a little bit um, that can relate to dating. Um, sometimes we are so comfortable in the discomfort of our lives or in the white noise of our life. Mm -hmm. I, I was very successful at my job. I was good at what I did. I liked what I did, but I wanted more. 
but I was afraid to take that leap. I also define myself by the role that I had. And I think that when it comes to dating, you know, oh, I am that single girl or I am that divorced lady or or I have been the person that's never been married. We define ourselves by that role. We want something else, but it takes something really drastic for us to take that step. And then we have to be okay with saying, okay, I'm going to change roles and I'm going to be uncomfortable. Trust me, the fact that I, I sure, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to help people, but there was that level of also grieving that identity that I had in the past. Mm. And until you allow yourself to really be aware of what you're feeling, you're not going to be able to keep moving forward because all of that is going to keep you down as well. And for many of us, when we're in relationships that didn't work, getting back out into the dating world is difficult because we're grieving or we're still stuck in that identity from the past. Wow. I, I, okay. You, you hit it right on the head because I think, and I've talked to some of my friends about this. I talked to uh, you know some, some former coworkers and sometimes when they go through a bad breakup, um, you know, they love the person and the other person obviously didn't reciprocate the love that they thought they could get or should, shouldn't gotten. And now they might take a break six months, nine months, a year, whatever it might be. So what are the key things then mm -hmm. that we should do before we date? Like, uh, are there steps to, to follow? Yeah. You know, because, um, you know, when do you know, is it, is the right time to get back on, as they say, back on the horse again? Well, he, here's the one thing that, you know, and, and, and for me, um, I was married before. I, I'm married now. I was married before. And there was a period in which my marriage ended. And I didn't know, like, oh, when when do I date? Who should I date? I don't know if I could ever date. Maybe I'm meant to be the cat lady. Now, mind you, I'm allergic to cats and I have dogs. <laughs> but right. in my brain, because what happens is when a period of our life ends, whether it's something that we did or something that, you know, somebody broke up with us, there is a period that needs to happen for you to acknowledge what happens. And for many of us, either we move too quickly and we move to the next relationship without allowing us to process to, to without allowing us to um, figure out, hey, what happened? W you know, what do I want? Was I, you know, what do I need from a new relationship? What are my expectations? And I think that there's nothing wrong with wanting to get back out there. Uh, the reality is, William, all of us have a deep desire and a need to belong. Mm. And that's why we're dating, because we want to belong in a relationship. We want to be um, with that person that, that you know, um, is, is our person. But the, re the, the real thing that we need to keep in mind, in, in, and I love this line of this movie. It's one of my favorite lines, but it's a lie. One of my favorite lines is that movie, you know, Jerry Maguire, you look at the movie and if anybody's watched it, you have that moment where, you know, uh, Renee Zellweger is sitting in, in the room with all her girlfriends and they're all crying and, and moaning about like, oh, how terrible the guys are and let's go out and date. And it's like this whole group of women. And then Tom Cruise walks in and he does his whole spiel and... And then um, he says to her, you complete me. Mm. And she's like, stop talking, stop talking. You had me on hello. I mean, right, right, right. right? That, that's, that's the scene. Yeah. As, I, I, as a girl, oh my God, I love that. It melts my heart. But the reality is that we are never going to belong mm. in a relationship until we belong to ourselves, until we really really accept and love ourselves who we are who we need we learn to love and respect ourselves because once we know how to do that then we can teach somebody else how to love and respect us in the manner in which we deserve wow i, I you know i wanted to get back to the expectation uh part of, mm. of dating 
do you think as a, whether it's a man or a woman that we we're expecting too much from the opposite sex or you know that our expectations might be a little too high um because we're going in not knowing this person until yeah we start talking to them. We might have a, a few phone conversations, hopefully no texting because when, <laughs> yeah. when, when, when a damn text, you don't get to know shit. Yes. You know, yeah. True. You know how it goes, right, Julie? And, I know. You know, you, know, you want to talk to somebody because then at least you can hear their voice, whether they're high, they're low, they're happy, they're sad. Um. So we find out that we might like this person, you know, mm -hmm. the, the conversation has been going good. We could talk for an hour, hour and a half and wow, time just flew. But are we are we setting our expectations too high? Is that a possible thing? Here, here I'm going to put on my little life coach hat on here, and I'm going to answer that from the life coach perspective. Is that we tend to look for others to fill the need within us, mm. or we look for others to make us feel in the way that we want to feel. But the reality is that nobody else is responsible for how we feel other than us, mm. because our thoughts is what creates our feelings. You know, I, I, I hear a lot of my clients say to me, oh, well, you know, my husband, you know, he hurt my feelings or I have girlfriends that go are in the dating scene right now. And they're like, oh, this guy is terrible. He, he did me wrong. Right. But it's how you choose to think about the circumstance that is creating the feeling that you feel. And for many of us, um, we're so conditioned and we, we work at, at this automation that if someone says, no, you know, I, 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 I um, don't want to be in this relationship or I don't want to date you anymore. You know, you were a nice girl to talk to, but. I don't think that this is going anywhere. Mm. Then we make it mean something about us. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm this, I'm that. But if we begin to remind ourselves, hey, I'm a smart woman. I have a lot to offer. I have things that I've accomplished. I'm, I'm a loving person. Then when someone says to you, okay, no, um, you know, you're not the person for me. We're like, oh, okay. You can move on and start to look for somebody else because you appreciate yourself enough that you don't need the validation from somebody else. Uh, I, you know, um, when we go through that period then that we, that we're looking for someone else to, like you said, to fulfill us, is it because we're lacking confidence in, in ourselves? Are we, are we? Yeah. Um, at times. Yeah. Okay. So we got through a couple of bad breakups and, and mm -hmm. they, they might've broke up with us. And now we say, now we're talking to ourselves and saying, shoot, maybe I'm not worthy. Am, is there something that I'm doing yeah. wrong? And then all of a sudden now you, you, be, you, you go into a shell. Mm, yeah. I think that, you know, a lot of people are, are, again, you know, we have this deep need that we don't want to be alone. Who wants to be alone? Honestly? I mean, right. I like some alone time, but I don't like to be alone, alone. Right. And, and, you know, we want to share experiences. We want to share our life with somebody else, but ultimately a lot of times we are so um, concerned with the result of what we want, we don't pay attention to the process as well. The process of getting to, one, understand what your values are. You know, this is the different thing between my first marriage and my second marriage. And when when I met my first husband, I, I, I wanted to be with somebody. I wanted to date someone. I wanted to, and it, in the, on the outside, everything seemed great, right? Oh, he's fun. He likes to do this. He likes to do that. Um, we, we have a good time together. But I never figured out whether or not our, our values were aligned. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in, in the dating world, we then begin to compromise what we believe in, what we think, what we want, what we think, what we, we, we would like to see, because we, we want that instant gratification of being with someone as opposed to thinking of the long term, as opposed to thinking, hey, does this person feel as strongly about this as I do? Right. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, that's what creates the lasting relationships. It's not just the right now. It's understanding what's important to me. What do I value? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
I, I will say my first husband loves traveling. I love traveling. On the outside, it seems like it's a good match, right? Yeah. But the reality, and, and my second husband, he enjoys travel, not as you know much of a fanatic as my first, but the value system that we have about our life, about what we do or people that we love, how we approach things, those are the same. His values and mine are the same. Right. But it really, so I know that I had to really come congruent and be happy with what I wanted, what I, was important to me before I decided to, you know what, I'm going to give this guy a try, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. I'm going <laughs> to allow myself to go in that relationship. Right, right. Um, so now moving forward, right? So are there steps that we should take before we get out there again? You know, we, 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 we reflected. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, we need to belong. We were alone for a while. Now we want to be in a, in a partnership with someone. We, you know, uh, we, like I said, we reflected, we went back, we looked at some of the things we might've done wrong, or maybe we didn't see the signs like the red flags. And I, I've done this a <laughs> few times, uh, uh, Julie, and we're talking with Julie DeLuca Collins, where I didn't see the red flags or I ignored the red flags. Yes. I think a lot of people end up ignoring, um, the red flags because their desire to be loved is greater than the red flags and they figure you know what i'll deal with those later but this is the most important thing that you you can think of right now is to really think what is it that is important to you what is it that you who do you want to be right and then the other question too that a lot of people don't ask if this person never changes Mm. Is that still okay with me? Mm. Because a lot of people don't ask that. Um, I think that many people, many people who are dating, and I think that um, a lot of people, um, and for myself, even in some of the dating relationships that I had, I just wanted to have fun to be in the relationship. But I never thought, what will, is this, you know, in, in 10 years, when this person doesn't want to be this or do that or have this is that something that i'm going to be okay with right. right and it's not focusing on the negative of that maybe someone is bringing into the relationship but it's really focusing on again aligning to your values being clear and, con and, and concise with what is important to you is is healthy eating important to you is um you know family time important to you or you know, having a group of friends that uh, that that your person will will can relate to is going to the theater, eating out, different things, right? Because at the end of the day, when dating ends and you're in a relationship, you 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 there's things that are important to you, and if this person doesn't do it, then you're losing yourself, and then you're not going to be congruent, and you're you're not going to feel at ease. You know, because I, I wanted to go back to the uh, to the red flags, and like you said, and you hit it right on the head because you know being with someone overrides the red flags, and I and I've been through that. So now we move forward. You know, I've I, I took my time. I waited. Now I'm I'm ready. You know, we're ready to get back out to, to dating. What steps are we taking now? Are are we, you know, are we talking to a bunch of people to see who we date? Are we dating a bunch of people until we narrow it down to one? Yeah, yeah I think yeah, that, yeah. you know, my, my my biggest advice, and, and, and this is something that I see a lot and I tell my friends a lot, is find the groups, you know, the, yes, I think that now we have so many different options of where we can go and find and meet people. But ultimately, if you like to hike, join a hiking group, right? Mm. If you like to cook or if you like to eat out, maybe you want to join a, a cooking class or a class where, you know, this thing that is important to you is also the person that has the same affinity is going to be around. But that's I have a, a friend. I'm yeah. sorry, Julie, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, no, I, go I ahead. apologize. So going into a meetup like meetup.com. Yeah, for because, sure. Because that's perfect because you, you end up meeting more like-minded people. That's mm -hmm. so that's at least the first thing is try to be with like-minded people because that's already you got something in common. Right. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. The other thing, you know, the other place too that, that I feel that it's important is um, just like in business, right? And I say this to a lot of my clients, we have to network. We have to put ourselves out there, right? 
if people mm. don't know that you have a business and that you know you you're looking for this type of client then they won't introduce you to them typically you go out to a networking space and it's like hey who do you know that is looking for a business coach who do you know that uh can work on habits and looking for a tiny habits coach like me right i put myself out there the same thing in our in our relationships in the business in, 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 a, in a in a loving uh dating uh stance Tell people, hey, who do you know that it might be looking for, you know, to date? Do you know anybody who is single? Give your, give, put your, you know, put yourself out there. Pitch yourself um, mm. to to your family, to your colleagues, to your friends. Because yes, we have the algorithm of all of the wonderful people that are out there building these wonderful <laughs> dating apps. But <laughs> that's, <true. laughs> that's there's going to be a you know a process also of getting to know someone where um if you think about like in business who are the best referrals the referrals are the warm referrals right because if i have a friend and i say william you know my friend um she loves to volunteer and is very adventurous loves her chocolate martinis and i know you like chocolate martinis guess what you already know that this person is a nice person because you have a relationship with me Right. And I'm not going to be hanging out with anybody who's kind of, you know, out there, right? <laughs> right, right, right? So that's the same thing in relationships. Maybe there's a coworker or maybe you have that cousin that has an extent. So leverage other people's um, relationships. Mm. Because even if it's not you, even if it's not the cousin that is introducing you to their friend, it could be the friend of the cousin that introduces you to that person. And in the meantime, go in it from the perspective that you're meeting different people and expanding your network. And then you're also finding, do I like this or do I not like this? Because it's important to realize what you like and don't like. Wow. I, 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 I like, to me, the key is putting ourselves out there again. You know, if you if where, you know, you might be, you know, home for a while. In other words, you know, you're just going about your business every day. Mm -hmm. But eventually you do have to put out put yourself out there out there. Go to networking events with like minded people. Yeah. Uh uh, you know, leverage other people. Yeah. You know, and I and I used to do that. And it's funny because I don't even do that anymore. I just go to a lot of networking events, whether it's real estate or yeah. or or just singles events and all that. Cause I like I like doing that or 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 maybe parties because I know the like minded people. Mm, absolutely. And I think that, yeah. you know, Facebook has a great level of events now. The other places where you can find events is Eventbrite. You can attend a workshop, you can be old fashioned, go to the library because your local libraries also have wonderful events that things that interest you. And that's where you're going to find people that have similar um, views and similar um, experiences and interests than you do. Mm, I like that. You know, it's funny. I never thought about that, you know, uh, about, you know, Eventbrite I've heard of, but you know, I didn't even know that Facebook had now those types of groups. You know, I'm always thinking yeah. other, other stuff because I always think about a meetup and all that. So once you get out there, once you put yourself out there, now you na obviously you're narrowing your choice uh, to who you're going to date. You go on your first, now you're about to go on your first date. <laughs> Is there <laughs> anything that we should be aware of in ourselves before we go out there? In other words, I know we're going to be nervous, but you hopefully, again, hopefully we talk to this person a couple of times. Maybe, you know, maybe we might, we might do a Zoom a chat once in a blue moon. Getting out there now is, is is taking that first big step. Right. You know, now you're putting yourself out there. You're being now, are we holding back our our transparency? Because it seems I, I, I get mixed signals. Some people say put yourself out there. Some people say no, no, become a mysterious person. You know, I think that the one thing to to really understand is put yourself out there and don't be afraid to spend time with different people. I think that the other thing is as you um, you know, as, as you meet people, you're going to have different emotions that are coming up when you're going out and as you're starting to date. And the thing is, 
ask yourself, what did I feel when I had, when I met this person? Did, what, what, what is the emotion that I'm, this person is bringing up on me? There's that little excitement when you're first starting to connect with someone, right? But, you know, there's a lot of different things that also we don't name. It's funny, I was just listening to another podcast that a friend of mine does, and he had a wonderful guest. And one of the things um, that they were talking about is how most people think that, you know, we have a few emotions. Well, no, a, a human person can feel anywhere between 30 to 80 different emotions a day. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That is a lot. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and the reality is that most of us don't even th like we think we f I feel anger. I feel sad. I feel happy. I feel mad. Right. So but really, we could feel elated, not just happy. Mm -hmm. We could feel joyful or apprehensive. Or we can feel lust or we can feel desire, right? And, and, and ask yourself, what is, oh, what am I feeling? Where is that emotion coming from? Where, and where am I feeling it in my body? Because sometimes our, our internal self, right? I, I can recall, you know, going on dates with someone that after being in a relationship with them, it wasn't the right fit. But I had that in, that initial like, oh, okay, that's, but I was so <laughs> intent on making it work, right? Yeah, yeah. And we move forward and we keep going, even though it shouldn't be. But that's because we're not asking ourselves. We're not finding awareness within ourselves. We're not seeing if it's the right fit. And I think that we need to see after we're with them, right? How did we feel during that time together in that date? Um, what, what, was there something that I loved about myself with this person. Most people ask, what did I love about this person when I was with them? But ask yourself, what did I like about me when I was in that situation? And did I feel insecure about anything? Ooh, did that person made me feel insecure about my nose? Maybe, you know, I don't know, right? Whatever yeah. it might be, because <laughs> right. insecurities will come up. And then name your emotions, name the emotions clearly so that you can, in essence, continue to really be the best version of you with that other person. Because the other person also deserves the person of their dreams. Right. Not just someone that is settling for them. Wow. Well, first of all, Julie, I want to thank you so much for being on People on Dating. And uh, before I let you go, there's a couple more things. Uh, talk about your podcast. Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Casa de Confidence. <laughs> the, the podcast is my little baby, so I love to talk about my podcast. Um, we started the podcast right at when I launched my business in 2020. And I wasn't starting it for none, no other reason other than um, I was turning... 50 and I had been laid off as we talked about and my husband thought oh this is a problem because I was going to throw myself a 50th birthday party and in April of 2020 as you know we weren't going to be meeting in person for a big shebang yeah, and yeah. my husband thought oh I better do something to distract her so as a birthday present he got podcast equipment and he said hey you've always talked about starting a podcast why don't you start one now? Here's a microphone. And then I thought, ooh, what am I going to talk about? Right. And then I thought, no, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about. And on the show, I interview what I call confident dreamers, right? Mm. People who are going confidently in the direction of their dreams. I started with, with amazing women, and now I interview <clears throat> dudes. And we talk about um, what does it take to go after your dreams? And I think that the main thing that I want people to get out of the podcast and out of listening to the episodes is that, you know, we don't all have it all together. When we see someone on Instagram or Facebook, we see them doing their cool things. They may not have had an easy path to where they are. Right. They might have had some challenges. The same thing when you see these happy uh, couples and relationships that from the outside, they look so ideal. Hey, you never know what's going on behind closed doors, but I want to demystify and I want to share the challenges and struggles that people had getting to where they are and what did it take to go confidently and how do they build their confidence? So that's what the podcast does. And um, I love just being able to talk to incredible individuals doing some wonderful things in the universe. No, sounds good. And talk more about your go confidently uh, coaching. 
Yeah, so Go Confidently Coaching, I specify, I, I specialize rather in working with amazing women and some cool dudes and helping them build the dream business and become the confident CEO of their life and business. Okay, cool. And talk about your book. So my book is called Confident You, Simple Habits to Live the Life You Have Imagined. And the reason that I wrote the book is because I want um, people to get to know some of the incredible individuals who have had an, uh, a, who have had an impact in my life, William. People who have um, taught me the habits that they themselves use to become successful, right? Because habits is one of the things that moves us forward. Now, you may not have the opportunity to ever meet some of the wonderful people that I've met. But I want to share their stories, their anecdotes of their life, and how do they use these habits and leverage them, and what are the lessons that they taught me that helped me become the person that I am today. Oh, sounds good. And if somebody want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? The best way is goconfidentlycoaching.com, and you can d either download a copy of the book, or you can download some of my other courses in there. <laughs> That's okay. I'll let it that out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. My husband just got home and I didn't realize he was going to come home this oh, early. You're good. You're good. So, yeah. So then you, you can, um, you can then download the book or you can download some of the other uh, big uh, tips and tools that I have there to build your confidence or to grow your habits. All right. Sounds good. Well, first of all, Julie, I want to thank you so much for being on People on Dating. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, William. It is such a pleasure. And William, you're doing such great work. I appreciate you having no, it's, confidently oops. in the direction of your dream. No, definitely. I, that's what I'm looking to do. So again, thank you so much for being on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. You're incredible. You're doing great work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, everyone, that was Julie DeLuca Collins, and you can find her at GoConfidentlyCoaching.com. That's GoConfidentlyCoaching.com. Julie, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. Much appreciated. You can find me on PeopleOnDating.com. That's PeopleOnDating.com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, when you get a chance, go to our YouTube channel, People on Dating. Please subscribe, leave a review, share it. Uh, and I would definitely appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, also, you can find me on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Anyway, guys, on behalf of People on Dating, I'm Will Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. And remember, it's just a conversation, no judgment. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.